Welcome back to the Pigskin Podcast. I am Ben Fearson. This here is Jason Feldman. Feldy's week two. It is week two. Week one was awesome, by the way. I, didn't, I thought it was silly, but I mean, there were some good games. Well, I'm not talking guys. about us. I'm talking about week one of high school football. Oh, you were? Then yes, it was awesome. But uh, it was unpredictable as, as usually week one is, as you, you see uh, who's reloaded and, and uh, who's not. <laughs> so we found that out uh, pretty quickly mm-hmm. with uh, some of those week one scores. There were a lot of blowouts in week one. We did. And, and some awesome games. There too. were some really close games. You saw one in yeah. particular. Yes. I was going to say it was probably the best game of the week, but then I went back and reread about the Spring Grove Cleveland game. Yeah, you're not being I, that I one. don't think that one's going to no. be topped. No, but. Uh, Congrats yes. to Spring Grove, by the way. That's a huge win to start the season by one point in overtime against a really good football team. Got to hunch those two teams are going to see each other I, again. I think so. But, Look uh, at that section. You still got Grand Medal there, too. My goodness. How about the polls? Did you see the polls come yeah. out? And, and they've got Spring Grove, what? Spring Grove, Spring Grove is five. five and Cleveland eight. is seven. Grand come Medal on. is one, which we understand, but you know, I'll be honest. I voted in the poll. I, I voted them in the top three. Yeah, I think all three of those are the top three teams. No, no, you don't. But whatever. Whatever. We'll see. All right, let's. Uh, we still don't have a sponsor, by the way. We need a sponsor for the show. Maybe for the, the game of the week. Maybe the QRF would sponsor us. No, I don't want their. No, I don't okay. want their money. Right. Um, but for the game of the week, yeah. you Hold can't on, get better advertising than that. You get in the paper a couple times a week. You get on the poll on the website. We'll mm-hmm. talk about you on here. I know what so it is. So any local business. I don't care who you are. They don't want me. Preferably a brewery, they but don't want, I don't care who They don't want me mentioning their name. It could be. It might hurt business. I mean, if you would smile a little bit, try to pretty yourself some, up a bit, maybe you would get more money. But get a haircut. Let's start, touch on Vikes and Gophers real quick before we get into the high school stuff. Vikings made their cuts. Uh, I guess you could say Alex Boone, the biggest surprise. I don't know that it was that big a surprise with the way he's played and how much money he makes. Uh, Mr. Frickty, no longer a member of the Vikings, mm-hmm. not unexpected with the way some of those young receivers play. I hear Caledonia has this new wide receiver suiting up for them on Friday night. <laughs> He's about 6'4", 210. Because they need full another beard. awesome yeah. player. Yeah. Right. But uh, so nothing real shocking there to me. Um, the Boone thing only just because he's in the second year of a big contract. Right. Just signed him last year, and frankly, we all know how brutal their offensive line has been. But he he had a big mouth and, and didn't back it up, so that's what happens in the NFL. Yep. So huge game Monday night, obviously, with mm-hmm. AP coming back to town, which could be pretty nasty. But uh, I'm we can throw that side garbage off to, to where it is on the side. I want to see how that offense plays in week one, and that's going to be the big thing. Yep. Is, and the is, line. Yeah. The line is the key. That's maybe the key to the season. Yeah, I mean, frankly, and, and you, the crazy thing about that is, I mean, you've got five guys up there. What three or four of them are brand new, and this will be the first time that all five of them play together, yeah. side by side. So, I'm not holding my breath, but maybe it's a good thing they open against the Saints. It is an issue with offensive line for cohesiveness and and run blocking. Probably doesn't matter so much. Mm-hmm. You go straight ahead, but pass blocking when you're all backpedaling and you're all dropping back together, you need to be doing it in unison, otherwise you create these holes in the line, right. that's a problem. Well, you know? And speaking of that, we can go right into the Gophers because that's exactly <laughs> what P.J. Fleck has said this week about his offensive line. I think the quote was, I don't remember his exact phrasing, but it was basically we had five guys playing as linemen, not five guys playing together as one line, and that's something that they need to get fixed in a hurry because the way that offense looked last week, they're not going to win many more games if they play like that. And so they're out at Oregon State late Saturday night. That's a, to me, it's a must win, and, and things are going to get nasty pretty quick if they lose a game like that. That said, clearly the, the sports books were not impressed by their week one performance because they are underdogs mm-hmm. to Oregon State, a team that barely beat or, uh, Portland State. Frankly, they shouldn't have beat Portland State, and they got throttled by Colorado State. And the Gophers are underdogs to that team, so you got to win that game. And, and honestly, I give Fleck a pass for week one as, yeah. as players are trying to figure out his mm-hmm. system and the way he coaches, and, and, and they have no quarterback yet. Well, I think like we talked about last week, that just has to be the approach this season. It has to be a watch a week at a time. I yeah. know that's coach speak. It's a cliche, but that's really what it has to be with a brand-new coaching staff. You think back to what happened with P.J. Fleck his first year at Western Michigan. They won one football game, and he turned that around in a hurry. So as hard as it is to take for Gophers fans, it just – you have to have patience this year. Well, Royce says that he's in the best <laughs> position of any of the last 10 Gophers football coaches. Okay. Yes, that's exactly. I want to be coming in right after wow. massive sexual assault scandal. <laughs> yeah, it's, I got it easy. You know. Even if that were the case, that, that may not be saying a whole lot. Well, the, ki- the kids transferred. He has no quarterback. Right. And it's coming on. Like I said, com- he, he's legitimately made us not forget, but you know what I mean? We, we haven't thought about the sexual assault stuff for a long time, which 
that could have set that program back 10 years, mm -hmm. you know? And he was the perfect man for this job at this time. So, yeah, and I, you know, I think with Fleck too, we had, he was hired in what, January? So we've had almost nine months of buildup of listening to him right. and his excitement and enthusiasm. So it's hard to sort of temper that back now and realize, hey, this is a relatively inexperienced team in terms of playing together and in his system. So we'll give him a little pass here and cut him some slack this season and let him get his own guys in here. Yep. Let's get to the high school let's stuff. Let's do it. All right. This is kind of our bread and butter. So, Feldy, you want to go with your player of the player week? Player of the week. For, we get player of the weeks this week, so that's we nice. We do. That's go fun. Go on. Uh, so many, I know we say this every week, so many uh, good performances to choose from, but I'm going to go down south, nine-man football, Mabel Canton, open with a nice win over, I practice this, Granada, Huntley, East Chain, Truman. Good work. Do I get a gold star? Get something. Ryan Kuhn, junior running back. He's listed at a whopping 5'7", 140 on their roster, so as a little guy, I know that that probably means he's about 5'5", 125, so great job, Ryan. Plus, you have haven't you been 125 in a long time. No, that's right. maybe what I was in high gotcha. school. Have you seen the kid's mullet? Yeah, it's impressive. In the photo. That Ryan, A+. Plus. fantastic. A plus on the hair. I only wish I could grow that much hair. <laughs> but that's not the only reason I chose him. 16 carries, 100. It did play into the decision. It told, yeah. did, sure, it didn't hurt. Right. 16 carries, 196 yards, four touchdowns. That's a pretty good opener. And I'm going to also, I mean, it seems like we cover a lot of schools south of us, so I'm just not really saying that much. But I'm going to go with Dusty Knudsen from Lewiston mm -hmm. Altura as the player of the week, or my player of the week. Uh, 154 rushing yards, a couple of touchdowns, 100 passing yards, two touchdowns. And, and much like your guy's mullet, I love the fact that Mr. Knudsen wears number 90, wears 98. 98 as a quarterback. Yeah. I'm all in on I got to I'm, watch him play a couple times yeah. last year, and he's just a, he's a fun player to watch. Yeah, I'm all in on the Dusty Knudsen bandwagon. Mm -hmm. But... One other thing I wanted to mention is the young kids down at Stewartville right now, yeah. uh, watch out for that program goodness. moving forward here. They're, they're already tough this year, but uh, Elton Myrie, like I said, I'm going to book, I, I may butcher a couple of these names. Mm -hmm. Elton Myrie, three interceptions and, and also scored a touchdown on offense. He's, he's not a big kid either, but uh, a sophomore playing safety back there had three picks in his first game. That's pretty impressive. They also had a freshman in Josh Burry. I don't know if I'm saying that name mm -hmm. properly, B-U-R-I. Six carries for 144 yards and two touchdowns. He's a freshman. And not to mention that defense held Dovriota to less than 50 yards of total offense. Yeah, be scared That's, of and Stuart Well, Gold. you know, Aaron Meyer said that at the start of the season, the coach down there in Stewartville, that, that they're going to be a defense first team this year, and they sure look like it in week one. Yeah, and be scared of that section with yeah. Lourdes oh, and, and, and uh, Stewartville and yeah. ZM. I, I still think ZM's going to be... Well, ZM got votes in the state poll this week as well have. they should. They should have. They're, they're a very good football team. So Let's, Let's pick some games. Yeah. How did we do last week, Fiercy? <laughs> Jason, don't be ridiculous. Like... I have to enjoy how, this while I can. You know how this game works. You get big mm -hmm. lead. I let you hang around. I stomp you in the late weeks. You're really letting you me hang are around crushed. right away this year. Yeah, I might just let you win one year. I, <laughs> or there's another way this goes. Uh, you get big lead. I press. You get bigger lead. <laughs> I stop doing picks. I will just say I went 6-1. and one and I didn't. Fiercy yeah. did not. He, he did was, better than me. In the he weekend. had four less correct than I did. So we'll just That's leave it. it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's do this week's pick. Um, I'm, uh, picks, I'm for sure. Gonna... Why don't you go ahead and go first this week? All right, New Prague at Century. Uh, New Prague won their opener against Red Wing. Century lost to West in their opener. Uh, Century hang around, hung around in that football mm -hmm. game. Their defense played pretty well, especially in the first half. Um, I'm going Century. Yeah. I, I really am. I, I know New Prague is coming off a huge win over Red Wing. I don't think those are two of the most powerful programs at the moment, mm -hmm. but... Uh, I just think Century has the athletes, and they've got a couple of uh, decent linemen. Um, once they start moving that, figure out how to move that ball on offense, that is going to be the key for them because I think that defense can keep them in games. they got to move the I ball. Agree. We'll find out this week. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Century 20, New Prague 14. Yeah, you kind of stole my surprise pick here. I was thinking you would go the other way. But, um, you know, it, Century did move the ball at times last week. Um, from talking to Guy Lambeck, who covered the game. I'm not sure that's the most reputable source. Do we trust Never. his information? I wouldn't. Um, anyways, from talking to him, and Century did move the ball well at times last week. Maybe shot themselves in the foot a couple times. And, of course, you have to give credit to West, too. That's They're always a good team. I think they have another sophomore quarterback who's lights out, like usual. It seems like every year they have a sophomore quarterback. Or freshman, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, anyways, uh, yeah, New Prague had a big win over Red Wing last week. Red Wing, like if, we said, not the strongest program. But. You mentioned West mm -hmm. and how they handle quarterbacks. You, if, you, if you watched West football, and I worked at the Free Press for a while, and, and obviously being in the Big Nine here, 
they work in freshman yes. quarterbacks every year. Yeah. If you watch their games, they work their freshman quarterback mm -hmm. into games, and I think that goes my. It sure does. But he's played varsity snaps as a sophomore. Yes, it's mop up time, but it's still varsity snaps <laughs> for a, a freshman kid who. You know, rarely does a freshman at that level of football see the field. Right, and I don't know what they do over there, but they have some sort of quarterback factory because mm -hmm. they just keep producing tremendous athletes. But anyways, we're not talking about a West game this week. We're talking about They even about had a quarterback Central. transfer to IMG and don't have him. Annex did. Annex did, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Just I think if he was there. <laughs> anyways, I'm going to go with Century, too. All right. I agree. I like it in, a, like you said, a low-scoring game. I think it's going to be about 16 to 14. I predict this to be the, the mantra for the rest of your year, just picking <laughs> the same thing all year that I do. And then well, if I do you that will this win week, by four. I can't lose. I can't yes. and fall and do behind. it all year. You so. get the same thing. So next game is Man, our game of the week. I have to pick this one first. Caledonia at Triton. This is a brutal game to pick. And I'm going to be honest, Jason's going first, and I'm taking whoever you don't take. <laughs> I guess I have to figure out which sideline I want to stand on and not get heckled. Yeah, you're going to get in trouble. With it. You know what? You, you picked know, Triton last week. I didn't, and mm -hmm. they absolutely stomped Byron. Okay. So if I were you, I'd pick, I don't know. I'm kidding. I'm not going to tell you who to pick here. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, boy, I, you know, after talking to both coaches for the preview that's in today's paper, um, you know, Caledonia has a lot of respect for this Triton program. If you look back to last year when Caledonia steamrolled everybody, they beat Triton in week four. It was 42-20. to 20. That's the most points Caledonia gave up all season last year. So believe me, this, this Triton team has their attention. It was a 14-point game right? in the fourth quarter of that yep. game. They scored a couple late it touchdowns. Was. And, and that game, even though you know Don Henderson said they, his team wasn't happy with how they played, but that sort of spurred them on. They won five of their next six games, and that only loss was in the section semifinals. Susan Brodom was up. So, uh, the team that did give Caledonia their closest game. Correct, match. right. And I, I'm going to go with Caledonia here just because... They're Caledonia. They're on a 29-game winning streak. They can throw the ball all over the place. They have three really good running backs taking the place of Ben McCabe this year. Um, I'm going to go with Caledonia, but I, it's not going to be the typical uh, four-score blowout, I don't think. I, I think the Warriors win about 35 to 27. All right, Cobras, I did you dirty last week. I'm going <laughs> to give you my endorsement this week. That's probably a kiss of death for you. But I love what's going on over there, and I really do believe for this senior class and, and really just this whole group of kids, everything they've been doing has been building mm -hmm. to this game and, and to beat this team. And I think if they're going to do it, it's got to be now. I mean, obviously there's a chance that it doesn't have to be right now. It could mm -hmm. be later. But I think if they are going to do it at the end of the year, they, they need to show that they can do it right now. They, this needs need to be a ball game, and I really do think it will be. I think Triton has the horses, and, and they play good enough defense that – you know, as long as they can avoid, the big plays are going to come. Mm -hmm. Caledonia's going to have big yep. plays, and it's how you react to those big plays. Right. If they can not hang their heads after those big plays and realize they are still in a football game mm -hmm. regardless of the score, uh, I think Triton can win this football game. And I'm going to go with Triton 26 to 25. And you want to talk about two teams that could potentially meet again this season. I mean, these are... Oh, they're going to meet. Look at that section, though, Section 1AA. All eight teams in that section won their games last week. And I'll tell you what. That's, those teams should be happy incredible. that Zimbroda got moved up to right. AAA because then all of a sudden you got a, a state tournament in that section. So yeah. Yeah. let's move on to the next one. Fillmore Central at Blooming Prairie. Both teams won in the opening week. They're both 1-0. Feldy, who you got? I can't pick against Fillmore Central. Just can't. Oh, wait, um, it was my game to pick It was your game pick to pick first. first, but I'll just tell you right Sweet, now. Sweet, then I'm going... Uh, no, I'm going to do <laughs> Fillmore Central as well. I, you know... Blooming Prairie, they're always an unknown for us, it seems mm -hmm. like, over here because they, you know, they don't play a lot of teams from this area. Yeah. So, you know, but obviously they have a very, very good coaching staff and, and they've got some very good wrestlers over there right now. So I hate They're always a the tough team to play against, and that's another team that always comes over with a quarterback who can sling the ball all over the field. Yeah. But Fillmore Central has kind of hung its hat on its defense the last few years, and um, they're going to do it again this year, I think. It, it, they've just been – that Falcons team has been so close the last two years to getting – over that final hurdle, winning a section championship game, and it, it just, I feel like this year they're going to be ultra competitive in that section, and they've got a lot of guys who have been around and played in some big games. I think they, uh, they carry it on this year, and, and this is a big win for them early. And the next one, another great game, Lewiston Altura at Zimbrota Mazeppa. Mm -hmm. uh, Lewiston Altura won and all after their season opening win, and Zimbrota Mazeppa, of course, uh, you know, that, that lead that they, they, uh, Lost against Lured, you know, Coach Rash said, I'm not making excuses, we should have won that football game, but hats off to Lured, and, and it is true, they should have won that football game, but, you know, Lured has a tendency to do that to people, they, they come back and, and uh, beat you if you don't keep your foot on the gas pedal the whole game, so, 
And not that I think Zambroda took it off, but I definitely think that team's going to be around at the end of the year. They've got athletes at every position. They're, they're a dangerous, dangerous football team. I think right now they're trying to figure out their identity of that offense particularly. And, and really their defense kept them in that game. Mm -hmm. You know, they really, they really yeah. shut down Lourdes until late in that game. You, you bring that up, and uh, I wonder this week, too, just how entertaining it'll be with, well, you know, watching Dusty Knutson run that Lewis and Altera offense mm -hmm. against a really good defense yeah. out in ZM. And on the flip side, <clears throat> you see athletes like Caden Steffen and Jacob Niebuhr, you know, they're on offense for ZM. Um, there could be a lot of big plays made, but on both sides of the ball. Me first. Uh, yep. Me first. Again. <laughs> Again. I'm going to go with Sembrota Mazepa. I just, I, I like the way they played against the Lords last week. And even though they lost, I think there is a lot of confidence that can be gained there. And they know that not only can they compete against the best teams on their schedule, but the best teams in that section that they play in as well. So I think ZM wins. Not going to be a, a track meet, I don't think. But uh, I'll, I'll take the Cougars 27-21. Uh, to 21. I'm going uh, ZM as well, 28-14. I, I just... You know, and we have a feature coming in, in the paper today, Thursday's paper, uh, on their punter, on Zabro's punter, Mr. Grudem. Uh, How many times have we written a story about a punter? Well, I came back to the office that night, and you heard me. It, it, I, he's probably the best high school punter I've ever seen. And, and literally the kid had, every punt was fair caught. Mm -hmm. He did not have a punt under, under 40 yards, and everyone was fair caught. So these weren't hitting the ground and rolling. These were hang tight. And he had two over 50 yards that were fair caught. It's like... You can't, uh, you can't top that kid, and I, and I really do think that's a weapon in high school football yeah, to have a kid that definitely. you can be anywhere on the field and feel comfortable punting because you know he's going to put them back there. So I just think Zimbardo is too big and just too many athletes across that field, and that coaching staff is very good, and they're going to figure out what that offense is and what to do. And I'm sure forward. Coach Rash will probably be happy that neither you nor I will be there because I think they were 0-2 last year when I covered them, and then they lost last Thursday night when you covered them. So. Good Probably. news, Coach Rash. Your, your game didn't win the poll for Game of the Week this week. Next one, Wabasha Kellogg at Hayfield. We will have a photographer at that game yes. on Friday night over in Hayfield. And, and both teams are 0-1. Um, I'm just going to go with Wabasha. Mm -hmm. I really think they've, they've got a lot of kids who've uh, been starting on varsity for a long time now, and they finally started winning some games last year, which really, mentally speaking, that's a hurdle to get mm -hmm. over once you start winning games for a program that hasn't had a winning season in a long, long, long time. Yeah. There's nobody on this team that was alive when they had their last winning season. Well, that's and true. I, I know, I know. You know it's that's, crazy. I'm and not trying to be mean. I'm no, I know. And, and uh, that's something that Coach Tim Klingbell said yeah. in, the, in the season preview, too, is, you know what, if this team can get to 500 or a little bit above, that's a successful year, and it's something to build off. And that's what their goal is. And I agree with you. I think they're going to win this football game. And Darn it. the thing to remember about them, too, is they run that, that – an orthodox offense with the, the single wing. There aren't, there aren't a whole lot of those around anymore. Um, but I know those kids practice it hard, and, and they ran it well last year in the chance I got to watch them play. Um, so I, I think they're going to go to Hayfield and win, too. I, I think it'll be uh, another close one, but I'm going to take Wabasha 30-24. to, to 24. Next one, Byron at Pine Island. Both start out 0-1, and, and uh, Pine Island suffered, started the season with that loss to Lewis and Altura, and you saw Byron last week against Casson starting off with a loss. Kelly, this is your... I this, lost to Triton. Byron? Yes. Or, sorry, I'm sorry, Triton. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, this is another tough one to pick. I'm glad that you're going first. Uh, this might be the toughest one to pick. For yeah, me, I think we talked a little bit about Pine Island last week and just how strong they were at the end of the season last year. Um, you know, they played against a really good Lewiston Altera team last week in their opener and, and lost, but... They definitely have some athletes, uh, some kids who can run the ball, some linemen, some guys who can can uh, make some plays. But you know, I'm, I, Byron does too, and it, it starts at quarterback with them, with uh, with Mike Cobble, and um, Triton did a good job of bottling him up, but also of of uh, t uh, blanketing his receivers last week too. Um, I think he'll probably break free, make a few more plays this week, and uh, I think Byron wins this one, 31 to 20. I, I really want to pick Pine Island, but I don't think I can do it. I, I, you know, you, you touched on it. Pine Island has a lot, of, a lot of strength. I think, again, you're, you're looking for a team that's trying to figure out where they sit right now. They'll get there, but it's going to take a little bit of time. And playing big schools like this, I'm sure, is not easy for them. But I, I do actually think it's going to be a really close game. I think it's going to be low scoring, and I think it's going to be close. I'm going to go with Byron 13-7. to seven. One more. Time yep. to nine-man land. Last um, one. Houston at Grand Meadow. Both teams are 1-0, and oh, but Grand Meadow, of course, is the number one, number team, one in the state. team in the state. Houston is much improved, and I expect them to have a solid season. But it's really tough to expect teams to have a solid season when they've got the, arguably the three best teams in their section. Yeah, if you go 5-3 and three down there in that 
section, and you, you could be a pretty darn good team and, and be 500. Right, exactly. So I'm going Grand Meadow. Yeah. I'm going to go Grand Meadow uh, 39 to 20. Yeah, I think Grand Meadow wins as well, even though they've had some turnover down there and some new guys in the lineup. They got their feet wet last week, got a big win. I, I think that carries over into this week, and, and they win uh, 44 to 24. That's it, Feldy. That's it. We're done. We're we done. are. I'm sure. Well, just for this week, we hope. Maybe. I mean, if I get that Triton game wrong, tri Cobras, <laughs> come on, for me. Let's get me back into this thing. We can't let this guy win. But, and, and if you don't win, it, make sure someone throw a football. I'm sure I'll get Throw a, a football at his I'm head. I'm sure I'll get a nice welcome to Dodge Center now. I know. He, it's not going to be fun for you. No. Mr. Henderson's probably not going to let you. Uh, I, 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 might, I might just have to watch him outside the fence. It's his last year. You don't want to disrespect no, him I'm, like that, Feldy. I'm not going to be mean to Don. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you want to sponsor this show, Contact Feldy, mm -hmm. his email Pain. somewhere, I'm sure. But thank you for watching. Uh, get to a game on Friday night. You will not be disappointed.